or your Chrome right now. Um, All right, sorry about that. Um, let's do a quick check. Can you guys hear Lemon loud and clear? Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> you see the way uh, Space Daddy writes your name? <laughs> pet the lemon, pet the lemon. Excellent. All right. So the game will start. Well, we should be able to start showing you the game in about 20 minutes. The game is being played right now. It actually started 10 minutes ago, but they're on a 20 minute uh, on a 30 minute delay. So uh, welcome to the pre-show. Uh, Lemon and I are going to talk about the decks, the matchups and uh, get you ready for the games. Hello and welcome everyone. Got some really exciting games up and coming, so I can't wait to get into them. So here are the groups as of right now. Uh, today, Lemon and I are going to be casting two games, actually, both from Group C. Um, in Group C, we have Magpie, Puzzle Express, Kerpeton, and Liu M. Uh, Lemon, do you want to tell us a little bit about how these players got here? Oh, sorry, Lemon. Sorry, one second. Uh, I actually seem to have forgotten to add you. So add your audio to this scene. <laughs> uh, yeah. Let's uh, get you back. So there you are. Okay. And then let's get your audio back too. Apologies, guys. All right. Okay. Um, can you say something now? Um, yep, I can say something now. Hopefully it's better. You guys hear that? Okay. All right. We're, looks like we're good. All right. So, yeah, Lemon's going to tell us a little bit about how these players got here. Well, notably, they all qualified in the same month, which was the qualifiers taking place in the last month. So they all either placed in top 16 or top 64 in the April competitive season, so the April ladder. And these qualifiers were played in May. So you had Puzzle Express and um, Kerpeton qualifying from the top 16 qualifier, Puzzle Express coming from the upper bracket finals, and Kerpeton from the lower bracket finals. And then in the top 64 qualifier, you had Liu Am and Magpie, with Liu coming from the upper bracket and Magpie coming from the lower bracket and taking the very last spot in the mid season tournament. Um, so yeah, it's quite interesting that all these players got placed in a group together after qualifying, well, all in the same month. Yeah. 
Yeah, so oh. here's the format of the tournament. Um, you may be familiar with this. Uh, if you're a StarCraft fan like I am, but it's the GSL format. It basically avoids, it's it's kind of like round robin, but without uh, playing, you know, it avoids the infinite tiebreaker um, situation. So there are two games. The winner of both games play against each other. The loser of both games play against each other. Um, the winner of the winner's game advances. And the the person who lost both games gets it gets eliminated, and the remaining two players play against each other, and that eliminates that uh, determines the the second spot. So today, um, we're gonna watch Puzzle versus Magpie first. Uh, let's say Magpie wins, and then let's say Leo M wins their game. Then Magpie and Leo M will play in the winners match, the, and um, the the other two players will play in the losers match, and so on. Yeah, it's basically you have to lose twice to get up. But if you win your first two games, you, you know, you advance automatically. Yeah, basically lose twice, you're out, win twice, and you're through to the main stage. Should we talk about the lineups? Um, yep. Let's do that. So here we have Puzzle Express's uh, lineup, since that's the first game we're going to be casting. He brought Enslave, uh, Nature's Gift, Symbiosis, uh, Pinster Maneuver with uh, Erland, and Patricello Fury. So yes, we do know the bands, so it probably will be wise to mention them as we go through the decks. And on the side of Puzzle Express, his Pinster Maneuver list has been banned. So we won't be seeing it, at least in game one, maybe in some of the future games we will. Um, but yeah, so I guess we'll go left to right. You want to start with the enslave? Sure. So um, this is actually if some of you, if you're if you're familiar with my stream and you've been watching uh, the toxic enslave five that I sometimes play, randomly saw somebody play uh, Arendite. Um and and I, I I have a version of this with like Ardol and so on. Apparently, Puzzle was playing in the Elder Blood League. And one of his opponents played something like this, and it kind of intrigued him because it created a bit of a wrinkle in his lineup. And so after some testing, he decided to include it as his fourth deck. So it's a it's a Nilfgaard deck with Heatwave and Yenvo, um, Lydia, and Treyhard. So yeah, it's it's a little bit toxic. <laughs> what do you think, Levin? Yes. And yeah, oh, it's quite unique. We'll go with that, I'd say. Because um, you're not running a lot of the staples in your enslave list. It's not assimilate really at all. We don't have your typical Terra Nova. We don't have a Stefan. We're only enslave five here because you're running non tactics in Heat Wave, Yenvo, and Arendite to give you very strong finisher and some very strong toll punishes. Um, in fact, three toll punishes in total, which is quite a lot. Um, so you have some decent point slam coming in, especially as you go into like round three when the Nausicaas come online. Um, and you have something like Rum 1, which can be used to copy a Nausicaa, as well as Slave Drivers. Um, and Blightmakers will provide some very nice tempo and thinning in round one. We're also not running Kalbi in this deck, so it's a bit different when we talk about consistency. Not able to order our deck from highest um, provision cost to lowest provision cost, instead is going to be heavily relying on the thinning from things like Magni Division, the thinning from Blight Makers pulling out the Mage Assassins, um, the thinning from War Council as well, to ensure that he's able to try to reach his key gold cards. Because it's... You probably will be expecting to miss at least one of your golds with this kind of list, because you don't have any tutors beyond War Council, which can only look at the top three cards in your deck. Um, yeah. So matchup wise, with three toll punishes, obviously you're trying to ruin the day off anyone who wants to go toll. Um, and you'll notice that all these decks are running Heatwave. We'll talk more about it, but this is a lineup that is trying to um, have a good time against something like Self Wound, and also provide not too many valuable targets for something like Bounty or other control decks to really take advantage of. Um, yeah. Yep. Um, let me real quick. I actually put in the the bans for the game. So as you can see, Magpie has banned Puzzle's uh, <laughs> Arendite deck. 
which I suspect was kind of what Puzzle was going for. Uh, uh, other way around, that's what oh. Magpie had banned. Oh, Puzzle's okay. pincer is banned. Sorry, my bad. Yes. So it looks like Puzzle's banned Magpie's deck. So I guess we can... Maybe it makes more sense to look at uh, the bands after we've looked at Magpie's decks, or yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. So we'll talk a bit about the Pinter deck, but probably not too much because it is banned. Okay. Um, is there anything special about the yes. Symbiosis, or is it pretty standard? Uh, I think it's pretty standard. I've not played much this season, so I can't comment too much. Gotcha. But it's just you play a million points with. Um, spring equinoxes, yeah. Yeah, the things that stand out to me are the lemons, again, like providing graveyard hit against self wound and also symbiosis. Um, there's also th there's a maxi, but there's only one hammer dryad, one elven seer, and one naiad fledgling. Usually, you see um, two seers and two hammer dryads. Uh, some of the other players in the decks that I've seen for this tournament, they've cut a harvest. But Puzzle uh, and Kineki, um, they, they're both bringing pretty much the same decks. Um, they've opted to go for Double Harvest and Lemons. And instead, they cut some of the five fees. I guess Lemons is probably a bit non standard. And this does um, sort of lead you more towards like this graveyard punish is trying to hit something like Self Wound. It can be helpful against some other decks, notably something like AQ. Um, or maybe dealing with some echo cards and more of like your NR type lists. But yeah, you're definitely going to be trying to ruin the life of like a self wound play with your Savior Lemon. Yeah, and chat's pointing out no Tempest. Oftentimes we see Tempest with two weather cards. That's not here at all uh, in this deck. Yes. Instead, we have like a Thaw and just, you know, the Lemons that will harvest. So yeah, that's definitely unusual. So uh, then we have the pincer deck, which we're not going to talk about too much, but it's a shoop deck without shoop. <laughs> yes. Um, it, yeah, so I, you were talking to me a little um, bit before about this, I think. Mm -hmm. oh, actually, no, it was the other shoop list. Yeah, um, I, was, I was talking about the PF shoop deck. But this one is like, but, uh, yeah. before the Erlen shoop deck was meta, Puzzle played, used to play a 10-4 meter generator. That had a lot of these same cards. Um, I don't think it had like Heatwave and Vigo. It had just more 10p cards, and it was just a very greedy deck. And it was punishing the Devotion meta because back when everybody was running Enslave Six and Devotion Warriors, they couldn't deal with Erland. Later on, that evolved to become the Shoop deck because it had more ways to deal with things like Scenario, etc. Um, yeah, and that became meta. But it's interesting to me that. Um, puzzles brought sort of the non shoop version. I'm guessing it has to do with Heatwave and Muzzle and him targeting self wound. Yep. There's also a COC, which I don't think anyone's seen in a in an yep. Erlen deck. <laughs> so Yeah, and we can also probably talk about King Cobra as well, running literally one King Cobra. Mm -hmm. um, no other poison cards in this deck, not even running Rodea, which could potentially roll a poison or a Renfrey, which can roll a poison, just a King Cobra. And this is to help against decks that would like to poison their own units which notably is your Golden Necker bounty list. So they aren't able to just use their Bynum Brothers and location to just store poison on their side of the board because you know that there is a King Cobra in this list. So it's this open deck list um, type of thinking that you really are able to disrupt how they want to play. Yep. And there's two Boiling Oils, which you also don't see in in Super yeah. Island decks uh, or just meter generated decks yeah. in general. Yeah, and the important thing with this King Cobra is that it also sees play in the patch style of Fury list as well. That's right. Um, which is the Shoop list in this lineup. <laughs> yes, and King so Cobra why is are we actually running a beast, shoop in this list? Which uh, something I didn't realize <laughs> until I was asking Puzzle about this list, and I was like, "Is the King Cobra just you know basically what you said to 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 disrupt uh, Syndicate?" He said, "Yeah," and also. Uh, it's a solve target for two, Kek W. So, <laughs> you know, in a pinch, <laughs> yeah. you can solve the King Cobra out if you need to. Yeah. Yeah. But it is a bit, because Puzzle originally popularized this type of list running the Shoop. Um, sorry, not the Shoop. Running just Sova and Svalblad together. Notably ran more like Vakushi and Morkbog. Mm -hmm. Although we see those cards taken out here in favor of something like a Shoop and a Curse instead. So, Mosh, why are we running Shoop in this list? 
<laughs> I was trying this deck and I asked Puzzle why, and he said it's for round one reach. So that's, I mean, there's no Rune Mage. And whenever I yeah. tried to play this, a few times I was tempted to play Shoop Mage because my opponent played a very juicy card on an empty board. And I always got screwed. And the one time that I that I didn't want swap, I wanted like do 13 damage. I got swap. And my shoe played for eight. Yeah. So um yeah. <laughs> yeah. So with your Sval Blood and your Heat Wave and Curse of Corruption Toll Punishes, you would imagine that last day is quite important for this list to ensure you're able to deal with whatever your opponent throws at you. They don't get to throw something out uncontested. Um, and this troop helps ensure that you do have the reach in round one so that you don't have to go multiple cards down and give up that last save potentially. Yeah, exactly. And this is like a red coin deck. I think the idea is to just sort of try and win round one, use Sov if you have to, and then in round three, go mainly uninteractive and finish with Svalblood. Yeah. Yeah, with the Sov, it's immune. Only really Curse can target Sov. Mm -hmm. um, and you just don't give your opponent very good targets. Notably, you are running Curse in the same list as Sov here, so Puzzle does have to be very careful with this sequencing. Um, but yeah, we'll see how that all plays out. OK. And just an update um, from the ESC folks. Uh, the, the Puzzle versus Magpie game is going to start about 12 minutes later than usual. So in about um, 16 minutes is when we're expected to start that game. So we'll take our time then looking through the rest of the list as well. Yeah. Here's Magpie's lineup. Uh, Magpie has brought uh, Blood Money, Bounty, uh, Non-Devotion, no Golden Necker, just regular Bounty. He's brought Patch Style of Fury, um, Devotion List with Tear and Fukusia and the Usuals. Um, Enslave 6 with Brothens um, is the notable card here, and Siegfried. And then, of course, uh, there's also the Shoop Erland deck we were talking about with Pincer Maneuver. All right, so let's start with Syndicate. What do you think about this list? This is very, very interesting, because usually when we talk Bounty, you're either speaking Golden Necker, which is your non-devotion flavor, limited to nine provisions and cards and less, or you're talking Devotion, which allows you to play these more higher-end cards like Brute, like Witchfinder, like Scoundrel. Um, but as I said, that list usually runs to versions, so you have access to the Horseman Jr. However, Magpie has decided to opt out of Devotion here to ensure he has access to the Heat Wave um, and other neutral cards like the Testament of Sword. Yeah, um, I think. Which is very, very interesting. I, I don't recall seeing the Devotion on the Nexus Bound Beauty. Uh, this might be more of like a Russian meta thing or because like in the evenings when I play, I, I saw lists like this a lot. Um, just not Golden Ecker, Bounty decks, but they would have either COC or Heat Wave because having Graydon as your only tall punish can be a little bit risky, especially if you run into something mm -hmm. like Self-Wound. Um, and so this is basically the Devotion deck that you're familiar with. Just instead of Junior, they run Heat Wave and instead of Tunnel Drill, they run Teshem which, you know, especially back when everybody was playing Pirates, was very useful. Um, not sure what the Teshim is for here. I guess there's still going to be targets like Aquin and Torres and um, Tier. Teshim is just a very good card, and it works well with, like, a Caleb with the Bounty as well. Yep. Um, but, yeah, this will be aiming to control the board quite heavily. If Magpie is able to set up his Menge Freak Show Executioners, which finder, it'll be very, very difficult for the opponent to take anything. But it does rely on having units to bounty. And, well, I don't know if Puzzle will be giving him very good targets to bounty. This is going to be one of the lists which Puzzle is aiming to get a lot of his wins against, I think, in this Conquest format. Yeah, and there's also a Salamander Lackey uh, in the list, which uh, can't yeah. really purify enemy units, so... But it does give you coin when it purifies stuff. So yes, because yeah, we're not running a Kurt and not running a Kalkstein. Usually, you see one of those purifies run. Mm -hmm. But yes, just running the Lackey is sort of a budget purify. Yeah, and not Peller, notably. So it's it, kind of wondering what what that's about. Um, I guess he, there's 
they don't have the need for offensive purify when they just kill everything and they have mm -hmm. Teshem to deal with defender if they have to so yeah all right um anything interesting in this patch solar fury deck uh well it's warriors and warriors whilst being around for quite a while again isn't too common in tournaments you see it a little bit popping up mm -hmm. but typically with p fury or especially in the most recent month it'll be some variation of the puzzle control list mm -hmm. so just good old devotion warriors aiming to run out a lot of points on your side of the board with the sovereign tier and also just kill a lot of cards the opponent plays with your buffed up raids from the warlords yeah all right and then we have the enslave six list so um yes which yeah you've had you have some experience with this right um a little bit i will note this is the list that has been banned on the side of magpie okay. um but the main thing i want to point out is we are running the brathens in this well a couple of things we're running a brathens but the only target is a duchess's informant which is quite a risky play because if the opponent isn't running that many bronzes or they get to round three and they're like i'm just not going to play a bronze unit this brathens can sit as a very expensive brick in the hand of magpie um and i believe actually in some qualifying the last month or two i think that actually did happen maybe to magpie i think it was magpie maybe another player yeah. they got hard punished for only having informant as a brathens target but also running siegfried in this list Siegfried, usually you're thinking they're looking at trying to use that against something like Cultus, but it can also be used against like just a slightly more expensive mass purify um, against maybe like a bounty or something. Maybe a so Yeah, or quite or interesting to see the Siegfried run. Yeah. yeah probably you not. Could purify a so and then Vilgo forts it, which makes them have to rely on the last say a bit more. Okay. All right. Um, and then we have the Shoop deck, the Pincer. Pincer shoot with Temple and Seus, yes. All God looks very standard to me. Yeah. Yeah, this is more of your conventional 10 4. Um, things to note are really like the 10 provision cards. Your tall punish of choice here is the Igni. Notably, doesn't require manual targeting. Can be used to hit an immunity. An, uh, can hit an immunity. It can hit so. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> it can kill so. Um, I think if so was the only unit you know, on the row, it wouldn't be in Igni range. Um, there's possibly an argument where we were joking about taking the King Cobra, but maybe Puzzle will unironically take the King Cobra as the serve target to ensure he doesn't play into Igni range. We'll have to wait and see, but Puzzle will have to be very careful splitting up his rows against this Igni. Um, Otherwise, pretty standard 10 provision cards. You're running the Ansays, which will get super buffed up from your um, Temple of Militale, getting pulled and buffed by the number of cards in hand. You're running your Rodea to sort of dip into a stratagem of your choice, whether the shield stratagem for protection or just a random neutral stratagem. Temple to just hearthstone your way into a few amazing golds and Shoop as a bit of a um, flexible tool and tech card, I suppose. Um, looking at the four Ps, not too many like crazy things. There are four provision cards. Probably want to point out the Freeing Merchant can be used to high roll um, a card from the top of your opponent's deck. Um, Magpie. You notice the, the king? <laughs> the, yes, we are running the King Cobra. I was working my way down the list. Um, <laughs> So yeah, the Free Merchant can find value, actually won't find value against Puzzles and Slave because he's not running Calvite. Big brain choice from Puzzle there. Um, <laughs> but yes, towards the bottom of this list, we have a few newer beasts. King Cobra um, actually can be used with the Rodea. So if you use your Rodea back row, you get the Poison Stratagem. King Cobra actually acts as a four provision toll punish in that case, which is a neat little interaction. Um, yeah, but you, you and, can't you can't yeah. grab King Cobra with Pincer, and you're not hundred percent sure to get the poison from Redea. Yeah. So, and are you it's really going to think of King Cobra in your hand seven. around three? It's more like a round yes. one card. But yeah, it's again, it can find value against like maybe a bounty necklace as well. It makes their life a bit more awkward. We're also running Wolfpack, 
which especially because when you should generate, you want to play everything on your back row to boost the units in your deck. It makes sense to run the wolf pack as well because you'll have a pretty full row you'll be expecting at that point. Um, it'll be a little bit of payoff. Nice. Okay, so Magpie is going first um, as far as coins go, and he's actually uh, banned Puzzle's pincer deck. And then uh, Puzzle has banned Magpies and Slave List. So if you're a Magpie here, uh, since unlike me, you actually have top 64 yeah. experience, what what would you play? <laughs> uh, what would I play? Instinctively, I want to say not Warriors. I feel like Warriors is very easy to lose on blue coin because the Highland Warlords you play, that's very low tempo. And Warriors can also struggle with proactivity. Um, so I'd probably say you're looking at either playing the Pincer or the Bounty on Blue Coin. Mm -hmm. um, I think typically, I I really haven't played much of the Shoop list myself. Pincer, do you prefer to play it on Blue or Red? Um, I think you're Red you're fine can let you, you use you Rage. prefer Red, yeah, because then you can be a yeah, little bit more aggressive, right? Which... Yeah, that's what I was thinking. I think you prefer red because you just can, you can play Mutual Generator and not um, get punished too badly, mm -hmm. like with a opponent trying to win uneven, because Mutual Generator can be low tempo. Um, that's if you try to preserve the answers. Um, you, you can run it on blue coin and probably just have to accept I might have to trade my answers to, to win this round one. Um, bounty can be run proactively, I guess, is running the double Bannacle Brawler, which will help a lot if you're going on Blue Coin, for example. Um, but against a control-heavy lineup like Puzzle, uh, we'll see um, if there's how well that will go with proactivity. But I'll probably say yeah, either Bounty or Pincer, not sure which. You'll probably be sort of trying to guess what Puzzle would be playing in response and trying to get a good matchup, I'd say. Yep. Um, speaking of Puzzle on Red Coin, what would you like to play? Well, this Patricide of Fury Shoop list is definitely a Red Coin list through and through. Um, yeah. The Nature's Gift I, is quite flexible, I reckon. You can probably play it on whatever. Um, and the Enslave, because you're playing this Erendite, I imagine you're going to want to be running that out on blue coin just to ensure you try to maximize your iron die value, get that as big as possible. Yeah, I guess I would be so. worried about getting my my weakest deck through. Um, mm -hmm. And I, I guess, yeah, the NG, you're fine with blue coin. Um, yeah. But yeah. somebody else would have a hard time against yeah. bounty, right? So... Yeah, uh, Magpie has two Toll Punishes effectively in the Heat Wave and... Uh, um, but like this, are the Seers ever going to live? Maybe, but, no, the Seer, well, the Seer won't live, but I mean, you can just, I imagine, look, I haven't played these matchups much, mm -hmm. but Spring Equinox, like, what, what is Bounty going to do against a unit that's been boosted <laughs> that's to true. like... yeah. They just have like, the one what is it going to do? Like, it. yes. You have a heat wave, you have a Graydon, but beyond that, like you're not gonna spend to kill like a 15 point Trian. Like you're not. Yep. It's terrible, terrible value. Um, so you can shut down the engines, but the spring equinoxes will be hard. And there isn't any graveyard punish in the bounty list either. So the Alyssa Simless will get a lot of value. Might even just have to bleed the Simless out, but yeah, it's like it, the the obvious cue definitely is the patricide of fury from puzzle. Um, so the question is, does Magpie sort of expect that, and just try to take a good matchup into that, or does Puzzle sort of think, well, P fury is too obvious. Maybe I'll take Nature's Gift instead here. Yeah. Yeah. So, so we'll be able to see what they choose very very soon. That's right. Uh, the players right now are doing, well, this is all 30 minutes delayed, but um, 
this is when they were doing their bands. Uh, so they, they have, you know, five minutes left to queue up and be ready. Uh, Gamba is up. I see that uh, chat's predicting so far 22,000 Tobins have been bet on Puzzle, 11,000 on Magpie. Looks like Puzzle has a bit of the home court advantage since uh, this is a t Team Elder Blood stronghold. Both casters are biased uh, TEB members, and we got some TEB yes. uh, notables in the chat. I, I think I saw Kha'Zix, I saw Passy. Uh, yeah, so we'll try not to be too biased, but yeah, I, we're both probably um, barracking for puzzle, I would say. <laughs> yeah, Nightbot can't um, keep up with the, with the puzzle commands. Yeah. <laughs> the little cheerleaders are working overtime. But... Uh, I mean, I don't know about you guys, but I'm personally a big fan of Magpie as well. I love his monster decks. Yeah. Uh, he like brought Kiki Queen to tournaments. He brought Varan Warriors to tournaments yeah. before. I think it, I, I want to say he was like the first person to really play Kelly in a tournament properly, I think. Oh, wow. Um, running like the Kelly with both Vanilla Siri and Siri Dash, actually, after Carapace got reworked. Um, like he usually plays, yeah, some really, really interesting decks. Did he bring Omen though? No. I, has anyone brought <laughs> Omen to a tournament? I don't think, at least not the qualifier level. Yeah, I don't think people want to get kicked out of their teams. I mean, <laughs> uh, um, yes, we should probably also mention that Pi is on Team Gwen Data. Um, Wait, what? Whereas Puzzle is, um, Magpie's on Team Gwen oh, Better, okay, right? Sorry. I thought you said Paya. Uh, <laughs> for, uh, no. I, I was like, whoa, Mag bombshell drop by Lemon. <laughs> Pajable no. leaves TLG, news of the set. No, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Magpie is on Team Gwent Data. Notably, Gwent Data and TLG are tied for having the most players each in this tournament, with three players from each team being played on the teams. Yeah, Carp used um, to be in TLG and moved to Gwentetta. I guess uh, a lot of the Russian yeah. players are in Gwentetta as well. Nikar and Sir is Sergo in Team Gwentetta. I know, I know Gabane is now as well. I think M Mystical. Yeah, the representatives from this tournament are Mystical, Magpie, and let me just check on no. Oh, Kerpeton. Yeah. So Coverton, Magpie, and Mystical are the Gwentetta um, representatives. Well, yeah. I mean, those other teams need three people to, to, have a, to have a fair shot against the Elder Blood Titans, Puzzle, and Kaneki. Yeah. I... <laughs> Two minutes and 15 seconds. Dun, 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 yeah. dun. Yeah, so while we're just waiting for the final... Um... I think it's time for some Halo through. vocals. <laughs> it's worth mentioning that in your shop right now in Gwen, if you go to your in-game shop, you'll see that we have the eSports bundle, which the prize, um, a portion of the proceeds from the eSports bundle goes directly towards supporting the um, prize pool for this mid-season tournament. And I believe all purchases up until next Friday, from memory, um, we'll continue to build up towards this prize pool. So if, you, if you're if you interested, if you want to support the prize pool, get some in-game cosmetics, mm -hmm. then go um, check out the eSports bundle. Yep. I am actually putting in Lemon's credit card right now. Uh, I'm buying myself. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> what, did you really believe you the thing about how I need a, to, to pay for the Discord stream? No, it was, it, it was for this. Oh, no. All right, so puzzle taking the enslave on red coin. That's not what I was expecting at all. Wow. So yeah, definitely going to be looking to try and win on even, I imagine. And you have the blue coin is the pincer from Magpie. Yep, and um, so this is yeah. Th this this uh, puzzle list. Uh, while you know it's Aaron dead, you think uh, red coin or whatever, but it, it's actually. Uh, sorry, you would think blue coin is better, but it's actually very strong on red coin because it runs two blight makers, and that's a lot of tempo to deal with. So, yeah, 
but it would be nice if you drew the black makers, I suppose, as well. Uh, talent is a necessary requirement. Not, but... <laughs> um, but it will look your red coin against the major generator and temple. At least for now, it won't be too difficult to stay ahead. And you see that with this Magni trying to thin a bit with the diplomacy. Unfortunately, drawing the Norsica sergeant, which won't be very useful in this round one. You just see Magpie saying, "Okay, you can build your Arandite carryover." I'm going to be able to carry over and reach generator and temple off Militalite, which is probably bigger carryover because you get like three strong golds in your deck. Um, so what golds did we find? Hello there. Trying to see. See, oh, puzzle just playing immediately afterwards. I think we saw a Gerhardt, and I'm not sure about the others. And hmm. gosh, yeah, they're playing very quickly. Magpie just getting the Ansys in hand, playing the Algod, building up some nice little carryover for the Erland. Um, and I should mention now, there is no Curse of Corruption in the list of um, puzzle this game. This is quite a poor matchup. You can't directly deal with the Erland. Um, and it is very likely that just this single Erland will be able to outpoint whatever Puzzle does. Yeah, and Puzzle doesn't run Torres in this deck, so it's not something that he can play after Temple to copy you know, any 10 P or less cards that were created. Mm -hmm. um, Kha'Zix was saying, I think Puzzle wanted to snipe this matchup. Interesting. So yeah, it, yeah, he is running quite a different list to your standard and safe, so maybe the matchup will be a bit better. So we'll have to see how this um, ends up. It looks like Ildiko, Gerhardt, and Dijkstra were what Magpie got from Temple. So uh... Ildiko, Gerhardt, Dijkstra. So pretty good pulls, actually. Yeah. Yeah, Gerhardt and Dijkstra are amazing. And Ildiko is not bad either. Yeah, I mean, if Ildiko survives, he could... Um use it to play Erlin and click it all in one turn. But not that it matters in this matchup. No. That feels too risky if it dies like a second last play anyways. Yeah. Um. Uh, Yenvo was used on what? Uh, the extra can be left in deck. He just makes your Erlin be bigger, right? Yeah, the Sentry and Knight was what was Yenvoed by Puzzle. Interesting. So he, right, he so Puzzle just trying to win on even and bleed, I guess. Yeah, and and stay ahead as well, right? So here comes the Cursed yeah, Knight. Yeah. Just just for six Whoa. or seven points, I guess. Yeah, I, I Puzzle can't give up the round. Even here, he would get card advantage basically. I don't see how he can. But also, how can he keep playing? Oh no. Okay, he wins on even. Magpie deciding not to just give up this and Sace. Um, but I do find it interesting. He used the Yenvo there. Whereas Yenvo you probably want to be using to target this and Sace more so. Um, yeah, I guess he still has so not the using wave. the heat wave. Yeah. Not using heat wave, not using Vilgaforts there probably indicates to Magpie that those aren't in hand. Um There's the heat wave, but the Ramon is currently a brick. Not great. So I don't know how Puzzle can lead here. Takes, oh no, this is a terrible wow. war council. You can't play battle prep, it's an empty board. You just got to play <laughs> the slave driver, I think. I guess. I, I don't know how many games Puzzle played with this because when I was trying it on the ladder, after four games, I put it away and played my Calvite version because stuff like this happened to me all the time. <laughs> but I just assumed that's my lack of talent. Probably Wasi, well, probably to play around uh, or to, to avoid giving Ophiri value or Vilgefort's value or just to, to have extra points because. He does run two Magni, 
and Slave Driver and Ramon. So he has lots of ways to thin and draw his mm -hmm. deck. But and, and War Council, you know. Yeah. But again, he didn't draw either Black Maker, so his thinning is like severely um yeah. hurt. And loses the card advantage here with this War Council just trading for the um deploy on the Radovid. At least you denied the order, you denied a bit of carryover, mm -hmm. but yeah, not ideal. Wow, and Magpie draws everything. Um, he's got Shoop, Rodea, and Sayas, Igni, Gerhardt, Erland, and he can even mulligan this Priestess. He's got a Squirrel he can mulligan. There's no Fur card in this list, no Man of the East. Um, just a reminder, you can always uh, type exclamation masters for, for a link to all the decks. So, what is the plan here for each player? Um, Igni, oh, Igni can even find a lot of value against the Nausicaas here. Go hot, just playing for pure points. Um, if we look at like what Magpie is going to be trying to answer here, this Margarita, you're probably just using it to lock the Vigo, I imagine. Um, and the uh, Shoop, what Shoop do you think you'll be going for here, Mosh? Just Shoop Knight for points. Yeah, you don't go for three by three because of all the armor. So it's just uh, probably a. Well, there's not maybe a lock on the Vigo or just killing the Vigo. I mean, considering you probably just Margarita the Vigo anyways, you probably just go for like a damage four or boost four or whatever. True. Um, so yeah, so you just play the Rodeo. Finds both tactical advantage and magic lamp, which is what you want to see to maximize the points. Yeah, I, I don't see how Puzzle gets the points needed for this. No. Vigo Fine. Slave Driver, which is what he wanted. This deck also has five driver. bronzes, so that was not a guaranteed Slave Driver. In oh, he's used both Mage Sessions, hasn't he? Does, yeah, yeah, it doesn't matter. Ignore me. Um. <laughs> Yeah, and Shoop Transform can even be used on the Erendite. So um, there's a there's 24 points on the back row. So Puzzle can't play anything else back there, or he gives a 20 point Igni. But he doesn't have much uh, um, other than a Slave Driver to play anyway. Here comes Erland. Yeah, it says 18 points front row. 18 points. Yeah, Igni will get some value. Um, probably can't battle prep this one power Nausicaa, has to just battle prep the, say, Slave Driver to play around the Igni here. Yeah, and the Aaron that's going to boost the Nausicaa. Yeah, not by that much, because there is at least like an eight power target. So it won't really impact the Igni. And there's also the battle prep. Or Puzzle does have last say, though, at least. Actually, way Yeah, no. Front row is the seven-point Igni right now, correct? Um, yes, by, like, one point. So. Here comes Ensayus. Just takes out a sergeant. 23 points. And like, here's the scary thing, right? Because Puzzle has a Tor Punish to answer that Ansace. I say answer though, but that should be used very loosely. 
Because yeah. the answer is traded up 10 points here anyways. Temple um, is a fine card. <laughs> yeah. So this assassination, it's not what you want to be finishing with. Like, they're kind of tired. There's an Earl and Tactical sitting on board for Magpie. <laughs> I guess the assassination will be used to actually give possible Unless that Aaron leader, is 60 points. That. This game is O-V-E-R. <laughs> but, yeah, like... Puzzle. I don't think Magpie really needed much more than just the Erlen to outpoint the board of the entire board of puzzle here. Yeah, I mean the Erlen deck has no engines to punish, um, and it was yeah. even winning. I mean, I think if Puzzle had a better hand round two, he bleeds out the Erlen, like he mm. needed Ab Lightmaker at any point in yes. the game. Yeah, the, the the problem though is you, you can't bleed with Norskis because those aren't online when you're bleeding off the winning round yeah, one. That's the biggest problem you needed with, with the, sergeants in yeah. that deck, which is yeah, you why need my the, version the doesn't run sergeants. <laughs> Sorry. Um, yeah. F fourth deck problems, right? Yeah, and yeah, the yeah we say fourth deck problems. You do have to bring four decks to this tournament. So maybe you have three decks you really like, but you need one more deck which maybe you're not so sold on. Well, tough luck. You have to bring it and you have to win with it. Yeah. Um, From what I understand, they tried lots of other decks and all, they all had really bad matchups. Um, yeah. So. so you probably just take something good into your targets and just pray it's going to just limp over the line. Yeah. Um. So we'll have the queens reversed here. Puzzle will now be on blue queen, magpie and red queen. Probably see the warriors from magpie. Nope, we see the bounty. Puzzle again running out with this NG list. Maybe puzzle thoughts is just my NG list is my weakest here. So I just want to get it out and try to make sure it gets a win against this lineup. Um, notably, uh, I don't think there's like any impact on like how your match score goes and like how much prize pool you win. It's not like a um like the open prize pool for yeah, I think. So you're just playing to win the series. You're not playing to like maximize your series score, if that makes sense. Nice draw from the Magni, pulling the Lydia into hand. So yes, yeah, so you have the heat wave, which you're probably wanting to use to hit the um, Conjurer's Candle in this matchup. Um, so this is an interesting decision here. Puzzle can use the Crystal Skull to protect the Magni, um, but you do give a bigger heat wave um, over to the Bounty side if you decide to do that. Does decide to take the Crystal Skull. Um, yes. This is probably the best heat wave you're getting as Magpie. Did Puzzle forget um, to put Bite Makers in the deck? Or is the game just trolling him? Maybe. This is, yeah. I, I feel for Puzzle. Treyhorn at least is all right. Yeah, this Treyhorn's going to win maybe the game. Snipey Watch. Really good He's just going to grab, casually grab the And it is also blue. proactive. Yeah. Yeah. Lydia well, can be a so decent if, proactive card too. It's not yeah. ideal, but... Yeah, it's not great into Bounty as, um, into Syndicate as well. Probably one of like the worst faction to play Lydia into. Um, and yeah, and you, you saw like the, I think it was the Diplo pulled like a four point card, which was, it's not what you want, like a congregation. So, okay, Magpie. This is a Magpie just saying, I want to win on even. Using your leader here this early is just, Huge commitment. Um, and also saying, I don't want you to get a lot of Erendite value. In response, puzzles, okay, I'm going to lead her and I'm going to trade her an Ilya Witchfinder or your Brute. And we say goodbye to Witchfinder. Notably, Brute is still at one power, and with leader gone, it may be difficult for this Brute to get built up. There's actually only one way to apply bounty in the hand of Magpie, and that's the Menge, which you're probably wanting to save for a future round. Passy, be nice. <laughs> be nice, Passy. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, Passy. <laughs> uh, Pag yourself yeah, out. So, 
Yeah, so Magpie probably wishing he still had the Witchfinder in deck, but yeah, yeah that's gone. He got he got so Witchfinder with Treyhorn, right? Is that what happened? Yes. <laughs> he chose to hit Witchfinder and not Ignatius. So Ignatius is at the top of deck, second card at the top. Was the top unit? So he... wait, Ignatius is the top unit. Oh, it... so if Magpie played a unit, we could have force. seen the yeah. Vilgaforts to force out a one power Ignatius. That would have been amazing. <laughs> Unfortunately, Magpie passes. So yeah. yeah. They trade leaders. Magpie probably doesn't hate that too much because his leader does sort of regenerate um as he kills bounty units. Again, though, only has Menge to apply bounties, so kind of limited in that regard. Yeah. There is a hysteria though. Um it is interesting that Puzzle chose to leader Freak Show rather than just assassinate it and yeah. play Trey her in the following turn. But mm-hmm. I think the worry is if the freak show sticks and maybe another engine gets played as well, mm, yeah. then you kind of just um. But then you leader the other. It gets one out of hand, turn, right? I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Oh, he does actually get a blightmaker, so uh, I bet he's excited about that. And and then Lydia probably yeah. into Veil. Vale. Yeah, you don't love playing the blightmaker into an empty board, but it does at least split your points into three bodies, which is what you want to see against. Bounty. Yeah, I mean, it's just two points expect- lost, and yeah. you kind of expect Bounty to play like this anyway. Yeah, I I imagine you protect the four power Light Maker instead of the five point Lydia because you're scared of Tushin Mutna. Um, the Veiled unit does provide a pretty solid Tushin Mutna target, which this deck otherwise wouldn't really give many good targets across. Yeah, especially since it doesn't have a Purify. Veil units are, are a pain. Yeah. Yeah, and I guess Tushin yeah. also deals with Melusine. Mm-hmm. I just realized. Yep, and plays on interactive in this turn as well. So I expect the Teshin. Um, okay, we see the Octavia. Wonder what he's gonna mulligan. Probably the, Probably the dwarf. Brawler and maybe also Teshin. Okay. Okay, just opting to keep Ignatius in deck. Just it's not getting much value. We don't care about getting it. In Who hand. knows that he's gonna come out when when a uh, scoundrel gets Vilgaforced? Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, the other Blightmaker gets yes. pulled out. That's a nice... Yeah. So it was either that or a Sergeant, yeah. right? Interesting that he didn't uh, pick a Sergeant. Yeah. I think Slave Driver also, but yeah, you're choosing between the Sergeant or the Blightmaker. Nice little Vilgefort pulling up the Lackey. Just points-wise, that so, yeah, Vilgefort's played think... for 13 points. Basically. Yeah. Candle comes out. There's the candle. So we, you expect the candle to get heat waved, but the problem with doing that is you're playing a very low tempo play in a bleed here. If you do that, it essentially allows Magpie to get ahead and probably stay ahead, I imagine. Hmm. But I mean, what else can you play? You don't want to Yenvo that. Oh, he plays the Arandite. Okay. Plays the Arandite for Arandite's nine points. Arandite's fine. How's that go? Yeah, there's no squirrel, so he's yeah. not worried about. It. Yeah, and I mean, if Magpie plays, like if he tries to put an engine, okay, mm. you see the Menge. I suspect this this will get Yenvoed. since Puzzle has enough I removals. Mean, I think with Heatwave and Arandite to like. Yeah, it doesn't yeah? You arguably don't need to really um, kill the candle in this matchup because you have a real was used you have the envy you have the heat wave you have lost say um yeah i guess he passes instead I think, just yeah, keeps all his tall punishes. should catch up here right yeah what's that executioner should catch up here right yeah plus he has um yeah candle. he's your leader to finish it off if he needed it So Ignatius is what six now? Eight? Uh, yes. Why did he? Okay, I guess he, he he had to. Just yeah, just saves it. You don't want to spend on candle there, um, and I think it is actually cheaper to use the menge and play like that. Maybe one more coin, but you keep a more efficient candle spend anyways. Okay, well, get rid of the Mage Assassin. There's the Vigo. Okay, Diplo. So there's still a Vigo, Slave Driver so... in the deck that he missed. Look, 
There's six cards in deck. This is it is an interesting choice though, because you probably want a war council. He has he played Ramon yet? I no. don't think so. Uh, Ramon's so 50, still in deck, but you can Ramon. Ramon from War Council most likely. Yeah. Here comes the brute. Uh boost by it's five and gives him four points. So 15-ish point brute. Yes, and also, yeah. Okay, does find the Ramon. I was going to say, another line you can do is you could Yenvo something, then pay with War Council. Um, but yeah, War Council is used. So yeah, quite nice. You see the Ramon onto the Norsa. Um, and this is what a lot of these control-heavy Nilfgaard lists like to do. They run a lot of control, whether in the form of these Toll Punishers and Tactics, or like maybe a bit of the Maddox package as well. And then you tie it in with like these nodes because you just give you that point sign to get over the line in round three. Yep. It's the But they are good prison targets. But Magpie I mean would have to bank for a poison or just um grade in this. How many poisons does yeah, Magpie run in? Anyway? I I think he runs double trafficker and fist tech. I could be wrong, but I think it's quite polarized. Um, double fist tech, no traffic is actually yeah, just the two. Yeah. So. Yeah. So yeah, and this slander is looking a little awkward. I I think you can test him and lead it to finish this sergeant off. Um. Interesting spend with the candle there. On Graydon. I guess he doesn't want to lose. Uh, he knows Puzzle has a bunch of tall punish yeah. left. Mm -hmm. And if, yeah. if Puzzle like assassin. I mean, yeah, the Graydon. Yeah. I think it, you boost the Graydon to make sure you have at least three bodies. Because mm -hmm. if you have two bodies, like if this Graydon gets assassinated, well, you have a Teshim in hand, you, have, you, can, you can get another body from the bank. But like, if two of your three bodies get toll punished, you've lost the game then and there. Yeah, and Puzzle doesn't find a slave driver, but he plays a sergeant and then uses the war council to boost the the other sergeant yeah. that has bounty. So now Teshim can't kill it. Yeah. Yenvo is used on the Ignatius. So yeah, and the the heat wave was gone in round one. The Graden is used on board here. So this Norsk is sitting pretty safe. It's only really vulnerable to maybe a double fist tech. What about a hysteria? Uh, which that's six and yeah, and then Tesham. hysteria into Tesham maybe with leader could finish it, but to but then end. you're also chewing through this armor, which is not what you want either. But th th there's no other option, right? Yeah, I think that's the play, assuming you finish it off. Hysteria plays for two points. But when Tesham finishes the sergeant, then you get an extra four. Mm. Oh, he plays fist deck. Interesting. That's I guess that also adds five to the Tesh. Well. Huh. Uh maybe he's just opting not to Teshim the Okay, yeah, I, that doesn't make much sense to me. It just gave up, maybe, and was like, there's no point. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think Magpie just had given up there. That's um, kind of a... Yeah, very well played from Puzzle. Yeah, I think that's... I imagine Puzzle's happy about beating mm -hmm. Bounty with his NG. Right? Yeah, I think... My... My uneducated guess is we saw the NG being run out first because Puzzle thinks it's his weakest deck. He's just throwing it and seeing if he can get a win. So having it win after only losing once, you probably are fairly happy with, mm -hmm. especially with the bounty. It didn't give up a win to the bounty, which is especially what you're trying to beat in general in this kind of format. Yeah, um, so the score is now 1-1. One, one. Um, yes. And the puzzles NG is gone, and yeah. Magpie's early is gone. So Magpie is either going to yeah. take Diva Warriors or non-Diva Bounty. 
versus PF mm -hmm. or. Um, so this is interesting. There's a limited number of red coins remaining, and both players, I would imagine, really want to be running their P Fury lists out on the red coin. So Puzzle has potentially two more red coins remaining. Mm -hmm. Magpire only has one more. So I look, I I said this last red coin. The obvious cue is the patch out of Fury list um, on the red coin. We'll see if that does get played. For Magpie, I don't think you want to run Warriors on blue. I'm pretty sure you probably just have to say I'll take Bounty, but I don't know. Feels awkward for Magpie, I would say. Okay, P3 Mirror, but quite different decks. Sorry, I'm just laughing at the drama between my mods. There's, uh, there's, <laughs> there's a revolt for me so, in chat. Labor yes. Okay. So if Magpie is able to get last say in this um, matchup, sorry, if Puzzle is able to get last say in this matchup, assuming both players draw their key cards, Puzzle should just win easily. Puzzle has the curse to answer so. Magpie has no answer for so. Yeah. Um, Usually in a PF mirror, red coin just wins unless one player gets really unlucky. Because yes. last say generally wins because last say gets to play their solve and the other player has to play their solve first and their solve gets, or sorry, last say gets to Arnie off last and the, the other player has to play Arnie mm. off and their Arnie off gets hit. You basically don't want to give targets in this matchup and Arnie off's a big fat yeah. target. Yes, so also the squirrel is quite nice here. It means the Blood Eagle, if played for Magpie, will just get um, banished. Armand Rakar is quite interesting, but like Magpie can't cleanly finish it off here um, with any of his raids currently. So, so I'm imagine this is just the Blood Eagle, Blood into... Eagle into the second Warlord. Yep. And probably just a snap answer with the Squirrel. Because um, last day is really the main thing that matters. You're probably fine using a Spar Blood to win round one, especially after this stratagem makes Magpie go quite wide. Mm -hmm. um, also, this Drakar plays quite nicely with the Spar Blood as well, because it, it has this armor. Um, but Warlords also have armor, which is also kind of not great. Um, yeah, and but maybe Saba the armor gets chipped off with like a Rockfall Warrior. Gives um, Bloodthirst. Mm. But I guess that doesn't matter too much. Here comes Squirrel, like you predicted. He's going to get the Blood Eagle, I assume. And Puzzle yeah. has both Tesh, and... both, um, sorry, Tome and Oniro in his hand, which. Yeah. And Svalblood blood and so like those are very good round one draws. I don't see him giving up this round. Um, well, actually, there might come a point yeah, where so he you saw doesn't the... want to play his cards, but yeah, yeah, we saw the buffed up uh, guiding slash used to finish off the Drakkar. Um and then the wide so, yeah, this the Giga Swap got changed right because old Lear my you'd split six damage along a row. Well, now that's just a sort of sub part of Gigascorp now, and Puzzle chose to use that to just split the damage, opting to not kill this. Um, um, what's her name? The, the the lady holding a head. You don't want to kill that because it can just get brought back with these War of Clans. Invader. And um, yeah, notably, Magpie did discard a Brockvar Warrior. Oh, sorry, not Brockvar, Uncrate Warrior with the stratagem so the one war of clans is online right now the other one is not this is um, like classic uh you know warrior's mirror kind of situation where neither neither side has anything taller than anything puzzle has two yes. one power units and it's a bunch of ones and twos over here but that's but actually like, good for like this, this four <laughs> yeah this four power unit is extremely tall yeah. in this kind of matchup around <laughs> it's one a, it's a warlord <laughs> among midgets you know it's just it's there yes um, so, yeah. Oh, that was, you actually got kind of happy this Berserk hit the armor. Um, it does set up this War of Clans, but 
Yes, you might see, you could play maybe a blob here. You can probably afford to play like your Nero first. Um, or Tome. Shoop. No, Stunning Bow. Interesting. Okay. All right. Maybe he just wanted to get rid of the Tome now rather than later. I guess, yeah. I guess Magpie doesn't really want to click Tome either because if he does, he could maybe blow up and shoot on the same turn and like lose on even basically. I mean, point. I think Magpie um, is losing on even no matter what. But Currently not. He has a pass, but yes, it, if he keeps playing, that's the risk. Yeah. Whether he clicks Tome um, or not. Wow, he, he just yeah. discards the War of Clans and plays a Primal Savagery. He needs to get Primal Savagery, yeah. I mean, Puzzle can just play Sob at any point, and what's Magpie going to do? Well, you don't want to play Sob. You want to keep... I'm pretty sure Sob is the one, like, up the shoot, Sob, and Tear. Oh, sorry, shoot, Sob, and Svalblood. You want to keep Sob for round three. You can have... You're fine to commit your Svalblood. You're fine to commit your Shoop to win this round. Interesting. Win it on even, that's amazing. Um, yeah. yeah. So he's playing Shoop here from the Tome. That's... I, I don't yeah. know why. So... Yeah. Yeah. There's, there's that so round like one reach that we were talking about. <laughs> yeah. And notably, maybe you can use Tome and Leader to set up some Bloodthirst for this um, uh, Champion's Charge. But even then, like, how puzzle probably can at minimum an era to get ahead. You'd have to lead her twice and like play a gutting yeah. slash or something, and that's not fun. Yeah, and, and, and if you don't get ahead, like, you have to get ahead in this turn as Magpie. Otherwise, puzzle has an amazing pass, and it's too, it's too risky of a bluff to take. Way too risky. So, for the. Primal Savagery. Oh, does he get ahead with narrowly with charge, I guess? Okay, he does. So both players also thinning a lot, which with turn playing a bunch of specials, it means there will be more units remaining in general for both decks, which means you'll have more of a unit heavy round three, um, which is interesting because you're not just going as uninteractive if you're forced to play units um you might see like discarding a bunch of units ending up being the play I'm very curious to see what puzzle will do here yes like he, he has to play uh, the question is what does he play champs charge he's gonna play it for six cool he's yeah, yeah. he is holding on to that so for dear life yeah Probably seagulls. squirrel. Oh, sorry, seagulls, not squirrels. Why no, did totem. I say squirrel? Totem. I guess it's resilience, oh. and he's planning on being aggressive next round too. Or without spell blood, totem isn't that good anyway, so you might as well play it now. Yeah, I guess. Like it is at least two units at once. Like it's not terrible in like a round three, but they just die. I mean, it's just targets. The, the, the problem is, puzzle doesn't know. Puzzle doesn't know that serve is in hand for magpie here, right? Mm -hmm. If Magpie is able to get ahead with, in theory, if this was another just random bronze or whatever, yeah. um, if Magpie got ahead, Puzzle would have to either lose round one or give up his serve, and that would be like a game losing um, sort of situation right there. So Puzzle needs to play a good enough turn there to get ahead by a large margin, so the Magpie just can't even contest at that point. Um, That's right. But yeah, we, we knew it, he just had to get ahead because the surf was in hand, but Puzzle was thinking, I just need to get ahead by like a lot here just to ensure I just can't be contested. All right. Um, you'd be expecting a dry pass here for Puzzle. Like, there's, there's no reason to play into this. Um, you get card advantage. You retain double last say, which is amazing. Um, yeah. And and he has an answer to tear. He has an answer to the herald. Yeah. So you, yeah. So you have probably the way it's gonna work out is you have Teshin for tear, you have curse for serve, and you have heat wave for the big unit that tear decides to pull. 
and Magpie, knowing that seeing Magpie that, opts, yes. He, he just says, so I'm going to play my tier now, might as well. Yeah, so now Magpie essentially is going to have to try to play a bunch of units onto the board um, and just try to trade up, essentially, to these sort of control, probably less great units that um, Puzzle is going to be playing. No Herald but, so yeah. far. And no Blood Eagle no. to get it, so... Well, yeah, the Blood Eagle got banished, so unless this is Harold, it's not. So Harold in what, like, bottom two cards? That's got to hurt for Magpie. Because, yeah, if we're saying that you'll get, your goal here is to just try and play as many bodies as possible... Like, yeah, and th this Svavla Butcher, it's not good here. <laughs> like, it's... you don't want to damage your own unit with no target to bleed. <laughs> it's a three-point... <laughs> yeah. So it's going to be so over here, I assume. Um, possibly just cutting slash. Oh right, right. Yeah, because because Skelly doesn't have any way to boost these cards. I always forget. You could okay, okay. You could butcher one of these to tr like deny blood thirst. No, I don't think it's great. It's look, it is better than targeting your um, villager. You you're fine to play your. Um, Brand first, but when does Puzzle like, play his Corsair? Yeah, so that's what I'm curious. It's got to be a Tempest thing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what's it called? Scepter yeah. of Storms. Yeah. Macro and he'll... Frost, I guess, or mm. Fog. I don't know. I, yeah. Cool, Fog. Um, because yeah, he wants to, I guess you butcher. If if Magpie plays a bronze back row, he can get Corsair it, first. and then Fog will finish it off. Maybe I don't know. Yeah, yeah, that'll probably be the plan. Well, also he just plays so back row. Frost uh, re reduces value on your COC. Mm. So if if he didn't play it right yeah, away, I mean, yeah, yeah. Well, if if. Magpie didn't play so this wouldn't have been close. Like if you CSC isn't hitting so if you don't really care. Yeah. Um, okay. okay. The butcher plays for five points, I guess. Yeah. And hmm. interesting. So puzzle doesn't doesn't need to kill something with his so he just Well no, actually he can and, still, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the fog in this course there is like combining very nicely to just set up a bunch of bloodthirst without really, um, yeah, huh. without having too many sirens actually on board right now. Oh, he has double assay. Okay, I was like, why is he playing it now? Why isn't he heat waving first? It doesn't matter. Yeah. Yep. So can he even hit the half for uh, one shot? So you couldn't probably have Cataclysm finish it off anyways. That is slightly RNG dependent. So I guess you don't want to do that. There's but no reason to. Yeah, he it's just wins automatically yeah. this way. Yeah, it's not even close. You have a thirteen point heat wave as well. So yeah, I was, I'm really surprised Magpie chose to queue that on blue coin. Like, yeah. It was either that or bounty though, right? And like bounty also Which, loses. Yeah, both are bad. Both are bad. That... Yeah. Like pu puzzles decks just farm control decks. The one he had trouble yeah. against was like, this the, is the one with a lot of proactive do. points, which is the Shoop, Erlen. And everything else, it's like Puzzle gives no target, and he kills yeah. all, your, all your targets. And Bounty is yeah. one of and those like, control decks that is actually susceptible to control itself because yeah. it needs to have you know spenders on board to do stuff. Whereas yeah. Puzzle's deck just plays specials. So Yeah, yeah. Pu Puzzle, that game, he just put on an absolute clinic, just perfectly executing his lineup strategy. Of targeting like this control heavy type deck, um, yeah. So puzzle is now on game point. He only needs to get a win with this nature's gift list with spring equinoxes. I don't know about you, but I really wouldn't want to be in that position as magpie, having to beat out arguably the strongest deck in the current meta to not go down into like the losers game. That's not the position you want to be in. Well, um, also with with bounty and devotion yeah. warriors, you know what I mean. Like diva warriors can remove lots of stuff below ten points, but 
once you get above 10, there's just champions charge and that's it. And yeah, and even then, like the bloodthirst for champs charge is probably kind of hard to set up as well. Just leader as that's your only um, like guaranteed way of doing yeah. it because everything else gets boosted immediately. You just yeah. So yeah, and I think in the deck phase we were talking a bit about how even if you're not like hitting like your ideal like target of like a self wound with this lemons or like oh yeah, the lemons is good into susceptible to graveyard, but actually in this matchup I was gonna just say blood eagle. But you even don't mind if you just start hitting a bunch of other warriors. Yeah, all the four Ps just brick or or make yeah. make all the reses awkward. Wow, puzzle. And, and just... going first. Going first, there's no way for this fear to get answered with the protection because the like other the, than no warlords have been played. Um so yeah. <laughs> 30 um, to 6. Like, I mean, you just Magpie's just gonna play three and pass, right? Yeah. Wait, how, wait, how many provisions is Spring Equinox again? <laughs> it's chat, is it five? Chat, should we tell him? <laughs> is it five or six? I actually don't know. I've not played much this season. Imagine which, <laughs> uh, which scenario is worse. It's that one. <laughs> it's five, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, yes. So oh I don't know if you've seen my, my so, last video on YouTube, but uh, uh, Ecstasis from Teen Nova was on my channel yesterday. And we we made a uh, thirty three card Equinox deck where it was playing for eighteen, <laughs> and, it, and it went undefeated in pro rank. So go check it out. Okay. So yeah, the reason I asked is because I was going to say we were like two cards into the first round there. Puzzle just opted to play a couple five provision cards, like easy thirty point lead. Yep, yep. thirty two points, <laughs> thirty two for ten. Yeah. So. <laughs> Like the maxi at least does give this Brook Bob Warrior a valid target. Um, <laughs> what's in the graveyard here for Magpie? It's just the it's the Blood Eagle. So you could see the lemons played here. Ops to just temper pass because um, how is Magpie catching up? That's the leader. That's terrible. And then you can sort of just play lemons for free now. Um, in the round two, like click it twice. Okay, by one point. That, yeah. So puzzles secured a long round there. Um, yeah, he's just playing it. Gets safe. to threaten like the Orshwin. Guess just play for carryover with this um, Xavier. Yeah. You love to see it. Does need to draw the Elissa, right? The Elissa isn't tutorable by anything in this deck. Correct. And he is playing Elissa, I think, right? Yes. Oh, up to not play the lemons. What is lemons used for then? To eat a Cutting slash, I guess. I don't know. But like, why not play on the drive pass? I'm a, I am a little confused there. Maybe he thinks his lemon might survive more than one turn. He'll leader it once, and it goes to seven. And can war can use it proactively here and like banish a warlord? I guess. It's more like points I than a Naya. It's one more point. Puzzle does like points. But but not Naya is more though, like after the Orshwin, because symbiosis, right? Oh, if uh, or any of that stuff lives. Lemon. Yeah. Yeah, it comes lemons with a leader. Because okay, Gutting Slash so is six right now, isn't safe. it? He he has to leader uh, now, which messes up his chance. No, only one warlord was played. It's only at five. Yeah, so he Oh sorry, Gutting Slash, yes, is yeah. He had yeah, only because one he had to leader to, to kill it now. Yeah. Whereas the Naya Sorry, I, yes. died to a, a stunning blow. Stunning blow. Yeah. Okay. Um, and I guess the other thing is, like, forcing leaders out early here allows you to boost them up. Um, Wait, so was there right. 290,000 points bet on Puzzle and 3,000 on Pankpy? Oh, my God. No way. 
TV bias is real. Is that what happened? But Puzzle is looking very good. I mean, Puzzle is looking very, very good right now. Um, yeah, yeah. It's 291k versus 5k. Black. So if Magpie wins, someone's like, going to be really rich. Yes. But the question is, how does Magpie win this round? He needs to win this round to stay alive in the series. If Magpie loses here, that's lights out. That's down to lower the loser's game for him. Yeah. Does finish off the Orshan here with the Brock Bar Warrior. Has to target it directly because can't get any other unit damaged. Poor Magpie. Um, yeah. See Decree being used on the valve to pull out the um yeah, and I think everybody just really likes symbiosis actually. That's why they're reading proposals. Yeah. We're all big yeah. fans of we the all love. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Oh, here comes the warlord. Yes. Now now <laughs> Now that getting slash will be eight points, baby. So that's actually your argument to sort of kill your own. Oh, oh, takes that. Okay, I was gonna say with the Brockwell Archer, but it just takes the Whisperer, um, which has to be killed. That will get a lot like, of. I guess it's it's a primal that... savagery here, mm. or the problem is puzzle has to be kind of. Scared of like overfilling, I'd say, um, to some degree against warriors. I mean, look, look at Mac by yeah. There's four cards yeah, that Mac are gonna remove something. If, if you fill up a board against warriors in round three, that's like a good problem to have. Yes, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh no, I have too many units against the removal deck. <laughs> What will I do? Yeah, okay, look, I was thinking if you have a bunch of low power treants, you have the rain knocking um, these units down to low power as well. Like that could be slightly problematic. Um, but yes, it's. It comes. It didn't even kill the whisper. Yeah. That, that, I think, unironically, that's the strand to let the whisper live. Yeah, but I mean, it's. Like, he That's still has so much room on the range row, so who cares? Yeah, well, once the Whisperer fills up the front row... They've still got six spots on the range row. Two of them being taken by Leader, by Magpie. Well, Protector is three bodies in one, I think. Oh, two? Can I count? Two. If he plays okay. Harvest? Oh, three, because the Whisperer counts. Well, Four with Harvest, then. Assume front row is um, filled. He has six spots in the back row. Um, yeah. I guess Simless takes a few. Huh? Yeah, maybe that's know. maybe that's Magpie's win con. I, I don't see him winning otherwise. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, it's his best shot. Because okay, here's the big turn. You have oh, and he puts uh, Simless on the melee row. That's okay. smart. Yeah. He says, "I don't want an extra whisperer." Yep. Oh man, playing into Scorch like that, how irresponsible. Yeah. So I think you, what, you can counsel for God. Yeah, and he blocks, and well, he, he technically blocks Sove, but Whisper first. Yeah. Blood Eagle into Sove uh, is always a, a way out of that. But like, you kind of need Blood this at least. And there is also Dryad's Caress sitting here, so you can't just float it. That's true, there is a um, Purify. You can, get, you can get two Blood first. Even with the rain, you're not finishing anything off. Actually, also, this leader is really good at closing the opponent's board, so... Yes, yeah. and so we sit here in suspense uh, as to whether or not Magpie can actually seal the deal. It is... Tensions are high. No one knows how this game's going to end. It is 100% yeah. impossible to predict. Um, we don't know what's going to happen. The score may look 80 to 22. Um, Puzzle may st still have a heat wave and an Eyes of Grimm's Council and another special, but... There is a, a Copium Fantasy opposite land where Magpie has a one percent chance to win. So we're gonna we're gonna sit here patiently and wait for no. that to happen. Sorry. There, there, there is a world where maybe if like I think Magpie played a bit differently and actually full committed to the board clog strategy. Um, yeah, he kind of killed some units. Actually while got a serve. To, actually got a serve to stick early or something. Um, <laughs> Yes, and if like and if the pig started flying, <laughs> uh, yeah, it's not particularly close. 
Magpie, looking back, maybe his win condition in this series was, I need to beat this North Guard list. Um, yeah. He might be looking back at that game too, being like, that's probably the turning point of this series, because, well, it literally was game two to four, puzzle one, every single game, it looks like. Um, you can use the Blood Eagle for the serve. It doesn't make any sense to summon a beast. Um, yeah, I wonder if that's Isagrim's what... Isagrim's counsel is actually... Actually, you could. You could. You sh... in But I mean, he'd have to brick the... his Primal Savagery, right? It wouldn't be bricked, right? Because you use the Primal Savagery to finish off... Oh, oh that's not the last card. So first he plays Blood Eagle here into what? He can summon a Savage Bear, right? On the front row and finish and that off, it? I think, I with the Primal Savagery. Oh, it just takes the Fabion Chance charge. That might be more. How is that more? I guess he does have... It's 16 points. Compared to... I mean... The... But now he gives he gives a spot. No, he doesn't because of symbiosis. Okay, look, it wasn't that. Um, like, it was only seven points. Yeah. It was I'm telling you, if Magpie Fool committed to the board clock strategy, he had a chance of winning that game. Chat, we're all, that, we were all I, wrong. I think Puzzle we, we, legitimately we made a mistake in this for a. But that um, game was really close. He he could have won it. I, I don't know if I don't know if that goes differently if he takes the serve. I'm not sure, but that's possible. Anyways, that's all hypotheticals in what actually happened. Puzzle wins the series 3-1. Very well deserved. Um executed his strategy um pretty flawlessly, I'd say, from game two onwards, and made the life very difficult for the control decks like Bounty and Patch Side of Fury. The puzzle will go on to the winner's game and face the winner of Kirpton and Liu M, whereas Magpie will go down to the loser's game and face the loser of that match. And uh, we will be casting that match as the next series today. So make sure you stick around for that to figure out who each of the players here will be facing. Um, but yeah. Yeah, I'm looking um, at What do you want to add about like finishing that series, Mosh? What's that? Sorry, go ahead. Um, do you want to add anything about like finishing that series? Um, yeah, I'm just <clears throat> I'm wondering if like, well, what I'm really thinking is like I got a message puzzle and be like, yo, tell us what your strat was with the draft or whatever. Because usually he has this plan of like, uh, I, if I get X through, then I feel good. Like he'll usually say something like that, and I wonder what that like. If w was it if he gets the guard through, he's he's done you know because of the coins like i think so i think that there's basically like against probably anything except like against bounty or p3 as you said mm -hmm. um puzzles you should always win on red coin yeah. um yeah that that was like not really winnable by magpie i yeah. think against diva warriors were just set. like they're what would sink magpie and his bounty deck also yeah. didn't he had two decks that puzzle ha didn't worry about didn't need to worry about and puzzle only had yeah. one deck that he, he had to worry about i think that's kind of what yeah i think that's um pretty fair and that's we basically saw that in how the match how the games resolved